Shalom, everyone. Uh, quick update on what's new in my life. You're seeing in the corner of the screen over there, that is Shadow. He spent about two weeks with me, uh, and right now he's got pretty bad indigestion issues. We've been going to the veterinarian quite a bit. Um, he's a dog that's been rescued off the street here in Colombia. And he's very well behaved, but he's got some sort of digestion issue that we're not sure what it is. Maybe it's an allergy. Um, also, another thing that's new in my life that some of you may not know about is the motorcycle that I've been enjoying. Now, I've been absent from YouTube and I've deleted um, pretty much all my videos for the past year that I have created. And I've been struggling with mental illness. Um, for those who have been following my channel, you may have been aware that I mentioned that I was dealing with depression. I'm still dealing with that. I want to talk about that in just a minute, but I also want to talk in this video about how truth, specifically the gospel, should never be monetized, and also how part of the reason for why I, I stopped doing videos for a while being based in that religion really should be something private between oneself and the Father. Um, and, and I'm going to go into why a little bit I didn't feel like the the Sabbath live streams that I was doing really achieved what I thought it was going to achieve. And, um, you know, I, I do apologize for having taken those videos down. Um, but, you know, the depression has led me to, to make those decisions. So I'm going to keep the camera on Shadow here. He is sleeping, so I'm not going to try and wake him up. And uh, I, I want to talk first a little bit about mental illness and depression because uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, uh, I'm going to read here. Um, Jesus saw a man who had been blind since birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus replied, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Um, we don't know what age he was at the time that he was healed, but presumably he, he had been blind his entire life and was an adult at this point. And, and I bring this up in the context of depression because, you know, I do appreciate those of you who are praying. And, you know, sometimes I talk to just a, an ordinary friend or someone who's not part of the anti-Paul community, and they tell me, Daniel, why would you put up with depression? Why don't you just pray to Jesus and Jesus will take your depression away? When I accepted Jesus in my life, I've been happy. And for some people, that may be their experience. And I wanted to point out this story about the man who had been blind from birth because it's not, you can't over spiritualize every little thing in life that goes wrong, even sometimes debilitating conditions like blindness or depression. I started dealing with neurological issues. I got my first diagnosis with neurological issues when I was maybe eight or nine years old. First diagnosis with major depressive disorder. When I was 10 years old, I was drugged with SSRIs and other things from age 10 to 18. When I became 18, I was not cured, but I said, doctor, I want to taper off of this and I want to try and go without the meds because the med, the meds uh, never helped me feel better anyway. They just kind of zombified me a little bit. Uh, and to be honest, from 18 onwards to the present day, I've never taken medication again for mental illness, a decision which I stand by, even though I have continuously struggled with mental illness since I was uh, about 10 years old. And so... You know, I, I do appreciate your prayers, and, you know, there's times when the illness is worse, and there's times when it kind of goes into remission, but it's pretty much always there, and um, that's just something that, that's unique to me that I have to deal with, and I have to trust that the Father has a purpose for that. So, uh, you know, I I would appreciate that no one says to me in the comments, why don't you just pray to Jesus? And then Jesus will take your depression away. 
I, my parents, and a lot of other people have been praying that for me since I was about 10. So it's just a matter of finding ways to get better. And that dog is one of the ways that, that I'm going to be getting better. I go on long daily walks with him, usually in the afternoon. I'll see if I can edit in a video of, of some of the pretty places that we've gone. I bought a uh, on Amazon a backpack. Now, it takes forever and a day for things to get shipped to Colombia from Amazon, so maybe within a week or two I'm going to have it, but there's a special backpack and goggles to be able to take my dog with me on a motorcycle. Uh, if that all fits correctly and works out, I'll post a video of that and hopefully uh, an update video that his digestive issues and, and diarrhea and whatnot has cleared up. Hopefully I'll be able to say that as, as well. Do say a prayer for the dog. Um, you know, going back to uh, depression, uh, you know, part of this was as a result of quitting nicotine, which is a decision I made back in January. It's now July. I've stayed nicotine free all throughout that. And uh, thank you for the people who have been patient to deal with all my grumpiness because that's what nicotine helped me out with before. And now I have to learn how to not be a grumpy human being without nicotine. Uh, and that's still an adjustment. One of the common withdrawal symptoms of, of quitting nicotine is depression. And considering I have an entire lifetime of dealing with depression, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that I was going to fall back into that. I really expected I would have bounced back faster, but, you know, that's part of the reason for adopting this dog off the street, part of the reason for getting the motorcycle, which uh, I, I want to transition into the issue of money um, because, uh, you know, around the time that I bought the motorcycle, one person privately said, oh, so, you know, that donation I sent you, that uh, that's that's what it went towards, huh? And so somebody who had sent me a $50 donation saw that I had bought a brand new motorcycle and asked for the donation back. I sent back the 50 bucks. No hard feelings. Not going to mention who that was. Nothing but blessings to that person. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, I've received very few donations. I do not monetize this channel. This book that I wrote, this is always and forever going to be available for free. Why do I say always and forever? Because if you open up the first page here of the book, you will see that this was published under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 international license, which means even in the future, if I wanted to hide this behind a paywall, I legally could not do so as far as I'm aware. But the, the point is that if you want an electronic copy of this, this is free. The channel is not monetized. I do not like the fact that other people in the community have monetized their channel. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for donations, but truth should never be paywalled. That's why this book is forever and always going to be available for free. Um, I'm hoping to work on a different book looking into some uh, prophecy in the book of Revelation, specifically to uh, explain my point of view of why I think the United States of America is Babylon. Um, now, a lot of people have disagreed with me for, for that, and I think putting things into a book for the same reason that I wrote this It'll help clarify my thoughts, and maybe in the process of writing it, I might change my mind and find out that I was wrong. Or if I put something into writing, you can take a look at that future book, which, uh, <laughs> who knows, with the, the, the depressive uh, state that I'm in, if that'll even uh, get done at all. But I've got 80 or 90 or so pages um, into that. Uh, so, so in any case, I just wanted to say about that motorcycle, and, and for those who have donated very kindly in the past. I have spent much more in equipment, microphone, cameras, editing software. I've messed around with some AI stuff online that really sucked and it turned out to be a money pit. Um, but, you know, for, for those who donated, I'm going to try not to include that in the video. For those who have donated, I appreciate it. Everything that you have sent has been reinvested.
uh, into this. So I'm not doing this to make a profit. The motorcycle that I bought, that was 100% me eating nothing but rice and beans and eggs for a very long time while I pinched pennies in order to save for that. So uh, I'm not doing this to make a profit. The book's free. The channel has not been nor ever will be monetized. The truth, in my opinion, should never be hidden behind a paywall freely. You have given freely. You have uh, freely. You have received freely. You should give, right? And uh, Yeshua condemned those who attempted to make a profit from preaching off the gospel. This is something that should be done for free. I don't think there's anything wrong with earning your keep in the process, but if somebody has an inability to access the truth because it's being hidden behind something that you have to pay for or advertising, etc., um, I think that's a violation of the teachings of Yeshua. Now, having said that, I'm in a pretty unique situation that I'm a single man. So, uh, you know, baby doesn't need a new pair of shoes, uh, nor do I have to worry about uh, mortgage payments or anything like that. Uh, you know, so so I understand other people are in situations where, you know, they, they do want to receive some monetary compensation for some, uh, you know, legitimate full-time work that they're they're putting into these studies or part-time work in addition to whatever they're doing uh, to sustain themselves. Um, and, and so on that note, I want to, you know, give a bit of a shout out to people like Marty and Doug, uh, also Christina from YouTube, who are putting out content regularly. Um, you know, when I really was producing a lot more content in the past, uh, a couple years ago, it was because there were more than just one channel uh, that that was disappearing from YouTube. And I felt like somebody had to be actively making content uh, in order to fill that gap. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of a relief to me to see that there are now a number of other people who have stepped up they're consistently producing content uh, and, and doing so in a way that's that's very edifying. So I'm, you know, I feel a bit of relief that I can just sit back and be edified instead of feeling this sense of like, uh, like I have to take the lead, like I have to be on the front lines, you know. Um, uh, so, you know, I hope at some point to be able to get more involved in things, but I have to, you know, take care of my mental health first and foremost and, you know, being out in the public, like being on YouTube, um, you know, I do appreciate those of you who give me encouragement and kind words, um, and those of you who have stayed in contact with me, even though I'm very difficult to stay in contact with, uh, but, but there's a lot of negativity that comes from YouTube, uh, which is uh, part of the reason for why I think the Sabbath live streams that I was doing uh, didn't achieve the purpose. You know, I was accused at the outset of having a syrupy, quote unquote, uh, uh, syrupy brotherly love type thing. Like, oh, we're all just going to get along and put aside our doctrinal differences. And I created the, the live stream with this sort of intent that anyone, even if they disagreed with me, could could go on there and share their views and so you know Christina from YouTube and Doug Del Tondo and uh, Nathan Moon uh, another heretic that is to say uh, you know came on the channel and I disagreed with some of them but we did so in a respectful way and I thought that brother heretic uh, was the perfect uh, model for that that he and I could have disagreements and we still do have disagreements, but they're private and they're respectful. And, uh, you know, I thought that if we publicly recorded those things and, you know, he says his point of view and I say my point of view and these are my scriptures and those are those scriptures uh, that people could, you know, watch. And they would also respectfully respond in the comments and make up their own minds based on studying the scriptures for themselves. Um, it didn't quite work out, uh, you know. Uh, I guess the person who had originally criticized me of this syrupy brotherly love stuff uh, of trying to unite people, 
you know, even though I disagree with that person on some other issues, they might have been right on that. Uh, I do think I failed to unite people, but at least there were some individuals who felt like they had a voice and uh, have begun making their own content on their own channels. And I, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't work out in a way that I saw that the father was blessing it. And uh, it, it possibly at some point in the future that might restart, but in an entirely different format. Um, you know, the, the one good thing about it is I guess it's the friends you made along the way, right? So, you know, now I know that I can trust brother, another heretic, and uh, he's someone that I can always reach out to. And even if we disagree on things, I know that it's not going to be the you're going to hell kind of judgment. It's going to be, well, here's the biblical basis for why I think what I think. Why don't you tell me how you justify what you think? And, uh, you know, that's that's uh, something invaluable to, to have someone like that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I just want to say thank you to those who had participated in, in that live stream in the past. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not that'll be restarted. But, uh, you know, with, you know, between mental illness um, and uh, just uh, some some personal issues I've had, uh, I've, I've bounced around different cities in Colombia trying to find a place where I feel like I fit in and belong and I've just kind of decided that I'm probably not going to feel like I fit in and probably not going to feel like I belong. So I should just put down roots wherever a place is peaceful and quiet enough to, to live with rather than continually searching for this ephemeral and probably non-existent Garden of Eden. Um, so I am in an undisclosed new location in Colombia, which is very quiet very peaceful. It's a tiny little town. And uh, it, it's been a little bit weird being here. Uh, I've been here just under three weeks now. It's one of those little towns where everyone knows everyone. I thought that would make it easier to get to know people. But in a weird way, it seems that they're more suspicious about why somebody who's not from there would be there. I have a coworker who's here, and, and she recommended it, uh, and uh, that's a story for another day. It hasn't quite worked out the way I thought, but you know what? It, it's safe. It's peaceful. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'll show some, some videos maybe of, uh, of walking my dog around town. It is, uh, it is a beautiful little town, um, and I think that's... Oh, I, I guess the only other topic uh, I wanted to talk about was was that I think really religion should be private. Um, and that is a, an additional reason for why I felt that the live stream, you know, maybe for the time being it, or or even in the format that it was, it wasn't appropriate, uh, you know, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Yeshua taught that when we pray, we're supposed to pray in secret to our Father. And, uh, you know, I, I took that to mean recently that there's a lot more in our faith that um, probably should be private as well, or at least that's where I felt led. You know, maybe I just wasn't spiritually in the right place to be allowed to be speaking on these things, so I'm going to limit myself to speaking for when I feel like I am specifically led to, to speak something rather than just making it, you know, a scheduled thing. Uh, I mean, how can you schedule the Holy Spirit, you know? Uh, it's it's kind of like the typical church service, right, that, you know, you start out with worship, and then you have prayer, and then you do a sermon, and and the Holy Spirit's just supposed to, to work on our schedules, right? Uh, so I think the idea of having a normally scheduled thing could be really helpful to people. But, you know, I think the last couple live streams I did, there was maybe five or six people at a time that tuned in. Some of them might be the people that I've met while I'm here in Colombia who not necessarily even understanding what I was saying uh, entirely in English. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I'm happy to have anyone on the channel, but I really didn't feel like the channel was particularly being 
blessed in, in growing and in, in any sense. Um, so I've felt led recently that my religion should be private. Interestingly enough, I've been hanging out with coworkers and you know neighbors and things like that throughout my travels in Colombia, and I've had more opportunities to witness without seeking it out than I can remember at almost any other time in in the recent history of my life. Hey, Shadow, you waking up, bud? So, you know, that's that's one thing where, you know, I I, I do think the channel can be very useful and valuable to, to when there is something that I feel the need to share. Um, but I'm not necessarily going to to dedicate myself to that at this point in time. I'm going to do what I can to get my mental health the way it needs to be. And this beautiful dog, Shadow, is one of the reasons for why uh, I think I am going to be able to get better. And, you know, I'm enjoying the motorcycle uh, as well. So anyways, uh, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I've been talking for about 20 minutes or so. So, uh, shalom, brothers and sisters. Let me know uh, what you think uh, about what I said in the video. I threw out a lot of different topics. Uh, mental illness, uh, truth should never be monetized, religion should be private, the reasons I had for, for closing down the live stream. Uh, any comments you have on those topics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do let me know down in the comments. Also, as well, if you have advice on you know, if stray dog, if anyone's ever adopted stray dogs or, or, or maybe just cared for dogs that have had consistently, you know, diarrhea, digestive issues, how did you go about fixing that? That would be great to know as well. Um, the veterinarian has been doing test after test on him and he's perfectly fine. There's just something wrong with his digestion. So maybe it's an allergy, maybe it's, uh, certain ingredients in the food. Uh, it could be something simple like that. So shalom, brothers and sisters.